Hey, this is Learn Algebra Faster, and in this video, we are going to look at a double bar graph. Let's take a look at a double bar graph. Let's decide how it's different from a regular bar graph. Let's see some examples of how it might be useful, and we'll talk about the four key parts of any bar graph and the one section that is super, super important for a double bar graph. So, I started off right here on the screen and you can tell we have the empty axes just like any bar graph you're gonna have this now a double bar graph the difference in a double bar graph is that not only are you going to have bars on the horizontal axis and they're gonna be a certain color in this case is green But for a double bar graph, you're going to have something cool. You are actually going to have two measurements side by side, right up against each other. So much so that there's no, there's no room in between. Now, do you see how this turned into a double bar graph? Let's go ahead and fill out all the rest of the information on the bar graph so that we make sure that we have everything covered. So we're going to give some measurements here. We're going to say this is group A, B, and C. And this is the form of a double bar graph. So you can tell in this section right here where we have a, we not only have one bar to measure, we actually have two bars to measure. And that's where we get the double part of the double bar graph. Now, one thing that's pretty important is you can't just do the double bar graph on one. You actually have to do the double bar graph on every category that shows up on the graph. Okay? Now, why would we actually do that? So this looks pretty cool, um, but I don't really understand what's going on. So let's talk about the four key parts of a bar graph. Well, actually, the number one part of, a bar, of any bar graph, whether it's a regular bar graph or a double bar graph, is the title. Now, this is just an illustration, so I don't really have a title for this graph. The second important thing is the vertical axis and so right here we labeled it 10 20 30 and 40 and that gives us the quantity of whatever we're measuring then the third most important part of a bar graph are the categories or the groups and here we just have a b c so those are the groups that we're actually measuring now the fourth key part of a graph, and I say that word on purpose, is the key. Now what is this and why does it matter? When you start doing a double bar graph, this key is probably the most important piece of information. And the reason why is it will tell you what each color means. So the key for this graph would have a green would have a, a green bar section and it would say you know maybe this is the measurement from yesterday and then it would also say that the blue color is the measurement for today now without this key you would have no idea what the green and the blue are actually measuring. You have no way to tell the difference. And so that is why the key is probably the most important part of a double bar graph. So let's never forget the key. Now, since this doesn't really have a title, we didn't really measure anything, let's go to a bar graph example. So let's do 
let's turn this off and so now let's do let's look at double bar graph examples so we'll just do we'll do a couple of examples quick so sorry that's a little doesn't look great so let's draw this a little better okay so let's make up let's make up an example and let's say the let's say ink pen sales per year how about that so let's let's measure that if we're measuring the sales we'll we'll say maybe you know maybe we sold 1000 between 1000 and 4000 that fits on our graph easily okay and let's say um, let's measure black ink pens let's measure blue ink pens and measure red ink pens now to make this a double bar graph we're not just going to measure the black ink pens only one time so we'll say we're, we're making this data up but we'll say that the black ink pens sold 3000 blue ink pens sold about 3500 and we'll color that in and let's say the red ink pens sold 1000 okay but this is still just a bar graph it's not a double bar graph so we're gonna go we we have the title that's important we have the vertical axis, that's the up and down axis, and that's what we have our numbers measured on. We have the horizontal axis, which is our groups, and in this case we're saying it's the color of the ink pen that we're, that we're selling. And now we have to go to what's most important for double bar graphs, and that is the key. And in this bar graph, we are going to say the green color are the sales from last year and then we will pick blue to show the sales this year now do you see how adding another color and other bars change this into a double bar graph so to, so take a look and so let's say that the black ink pen sales actually went all the way up to 4000 between last year and this year the blue ink pen sales went down to 2500 and so they actually lost sales and then the red ink pen sales doubled from 1000 to 2000 so check that out we added another color in this case it was blue and that changed our graph from just a regular bar graph into a double bar graph. So that's really cool because now we weren't just measuring how many ink pens that were sold. We actually took the measurement from last year and we put it on the graph. But then we turned it into a double bar graph by putting this year's sales on there. And from this we can see the red, red doubled. We can see so it went up a lot the blue sales went down and the black sales went up so last year it was 3000 now it's 4000 so that went up blue sales went from 3500 to 2500 so they went down by a thousand and red went up a thousand from 1000 to 2000 so you can see how the sales changed between this year and last year so that's pretty cool let's do one more example and let's show how we can change a regular bar graph into a double bar graph. Okay, 
So let's see. Um, let's let's title this graph the. Favorite book type by classroom. So hang with me here for just a second. So actually what we're going to measure here is we're going to talk about two different classrooms and we're going to try to figure out what students, so let's actually, let's actually say that, the student's favorite book type by classroom. So, so right there, that's the title. We know that we're, we're counting students and we're counting their favorite book type and we're, and we're doing it by the classroom. So we're going to have to measure all three of those things. Well, obviously the number is going to be on the vertical axis. So we'll go ahead and label it the the, the favorite book type is how we're going to is how we're going to group these. So we're going to say uh, comic book. Let's say a chapter book, and we will say a picture book. Now for the key. We need to say that green is a first grade classroom and blue is a second grade classroom. So that's how we're actually going to measure this and we'll do this, we'll do this pretty quickly. So if we didn't have that key here, no one would know no one would know what what these bars mean but because we have both colors we can actually we can actually show different types of graphs now i did this fast and didn't switch the colors on my pen so i actually did it a little bit backwards but you can see that some people might freak out. They know that we're counting students. We know that we're counting books and we're counting classrooms. But what's cool about a double bar graph is we can count the students. That's just the number. So that goes on the vertical axis. Now, to be honest, either one of these, either the book or the classroom type could go here on the horizontal axis. In this case, we chose the book type, so comic books, chapter books, or picture books, and we grouped them, and we, and then we did the classroom by labeling it in the key and giving it different colors. So in this case, we can see that picture books are the favorite type of book for both the first grade classroom and the second grade classroom, and we can see the changes between the first grade classroom, which, which really likes comic books. There are lots of people who like comic books, but in second grade, there aren't as many people who like comic books. And in the first grade classroom, there are a few people who like chapter books, but it actually increased in popularity as the kids got older and got into second grade classroom. So check that out. You'll see that double bar graphs are actually really useful and they're, and they're really not that much harder than regular bar graphs. So it's super important that you have a key and that is the most important factor when you're going from a single bar graph to a double bar graph. So that's your, that's your secret weapon right there is the key. I hope this video was helpful. If you're interested in learning more about bar graphs or seeing more examples or hearing more explanations, check out our website at learnalgebrafaster.com.